think uh, this can be a somehow like a lesson for disciples to learn, amen, to be ready all the time. <laughs> In case I get stuck, uh, somebody has to continue just with the preaching <laughs> without waiting for me. Okay, so be ready with your sermons, with messages in season, out of season, and preach when I'm not here. Amen. You don't need to wait for me all the time. But I want to read, amen, from the book of Acts chapter 12, verse 1. The Bible says, now about that time Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex Satan of the church, and he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four, quarter, to, to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the, and the uh, keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and uh, a light shined in the prison, and he smote Peter on the side. And raised him up, saying, Arise up and uh, arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. Amen. I want to speak to you this morning a message I've entitled Chain Breaker. Amen. Here, what we are reading, amen, is uh, Simon Peter is in prison and there's chains on his hands. But as Simon Peter is in this prison, amen, he's bound with his chains. He's unable to, amen, um, set himself free. But uh, as he's set in prison, on the other side, his brothers and sisters in the church, the Bible says they start praying for him. They are praying without stopping, amen. The Bible says they prayed without ceasing throughout the night. And as they are praying, an angel of the Lord appeared unto Simon Peter, and um, he smote the chains, and the chains, the Bible says, fell off from his hands, and he was free. Now, one thing you and I need to understand is, the devil or the enemy, Satan, uses chains all the time. And uh, the chains, uh, I want to look at the purpose of chains. The chains are there to, number one, control you and I. That when you put someone in chains, you have the ability to control somebody. During the time, amen, uh, most of you probably have seen these pictures of slave traders from way back then. And you would see how they are chained in history books, amen, um, how people were chained. And uh, basically what these guys would do is when they chain you, they have control over you. They can tell you what to do, amen, or they can chain you to something and they can walk you around wherever they want you to go. So chains are there to control you. And the devil or Satan uses chains, amen, upon people. They can be chains, amen, of alcohol this morning, chains of drugs and cigarettes and marijuana the list goes on but all these are the chains amen that satan uses to control people gambling can be a chain i remember amen has told this story about a brother way back he's now a good man this guy came to me amen one day we we're watching cnn news and he just asked me am, am i a bad person I told him, no, you're not a bad person. Why do you say that? Then he began to tell me a story about himself, what he used to do. And he told me, amen, um, how that when his sister, his older sister, will give him, say, for example, $500 to go and buy some groceries because he's the oldest son or oldest brother. So what you do is, he said, you would take this money and uh, he will be on his way to the shop. 
But before he knows it, something will tell him just turn into the gambling house. And you go there, he starts to gamble. He puts in one dollar and one dollar in the jackpot. Before he knows it, the whole 500 is done. And this is a chain, amen. This guy is an older guy, but he was crying, literally. He is, he, because at that time, um, there was uh, an e-wallet that his sister told him, go and buy, but please, don't go to the jackpot. He says, I will not. But he's saying, as he's going, he withdrew the money. He has made up his mind. Um, I'm not going to the jackpot, but unbeknown to him, he said, something just turned him and he went straight. And he finished the entire money that was left. So this can be changed, amen, that the devil uses them. He is trying to chain people to use them, amen. Now, there are many people today, um, they will tell you, you know what, I want to stop, but I can't. Something is controlling me. Something, uh, I mean, it's almost like uh, I want to get rid of the cigarette, but I keep on going back. It's a chain, amen. So chains are there to control you. I don't know what's going on, but all of a sudden, I, something takes over me and controls me and I start to do this thing. And many people do not know why they are doing some things. They want to stop. They want to say no, amen. But guess what? The enemy or Satan um, is behind controlling people with chains. Not only that, chains are there to stagnate you. You know, in life, if you want to keep something stationary, if you want to keep a dog, not to go somewhere, what do you do? You chain that dog, right? And that dog can try to bark, it can only go up to there and come back again. It's not going in front, it's just going up to there and coming back again. Right? It's chained to one place. And some people, that's their life. Life is not going forward. You just find yourself at one place. Yes, you might be growing older. Yes, amen. Um, things might happen in your life. Um, but at the end of the day, you find yourself not going anywhere. You are just chained at one place. You can't go anywhere. So chains are there to stagnate you. They are there, amen, to frustrate you. Because I mean, you know, it's very much frustrating to be at one place for a long time. It's not a good thing. Other people's lives are moving on. Other people are changing. But you, year in and year out, you are at one place. There is no change. It's frustrating. But that's what chains do. Satan will put a chain around you and you find yourself, amen, and just stagnant in one position. You try to do new things. You try to do, amen, come up with a creative idea. They all break down, amen. The chain is there to just hold you back. You don't see yourself changing. The Bible says, amen, you get money and you put it in a bag with holes. See, some people... A job or money will not change them. You think, oh man, if I get a job, something will change. Well, guess what? Sometimes um, you take money, you put it in the pocket, it's done. There's no difference from when you were broke or when you didn't have a job and when you have a job. Amen. There's no difference. You don't know where your money is going and that is exactly what change are there to do. Chains are there to, amen, keep you in one position. Not only that, amen, they can only also take you backwards. You see, sometimes in life, it's not just about being in one place. Sometimes some people in life, they are moving backwards. <laughs> you know, you, you are going back. You are regressing. Your life keeps on going back and back and back. Now to look at the type of chains, amen. Now there are different types of chains that the devil uses to chain people. Of course, they might be for different reasons. Now number one, they are mental chains. This speaks about the mind. 
that you know that if the devil can wrap a chain around your mind, around your brain, amen, um, it's, um, uh, it restricts your thinking. Amen. Just for you to be able to think outside of the box is limited. Why? Because there's a chain around your mind. A mental chain. Some people, amen, um, when they think about themselves, all the things will not become anything. Why? It's a mental chain. Some people can't even think. They are too lazy just to think. <laughs> now, I'm not think, talking about just daydreaming. Sitting here. <laughs> I'm talking about critical thinking. Amen. Amen. Some people are too lazy to think about business ideas. Some people, all they want is the government must give us Harambe money. The government, you know, how long will you complain about the government? Change your own situation, amen. No, these rich people of okay, they are waste, they must give us money. No, work for your own money. <laughs> but you see what happens is um, there's a mental chain on some people. And once the devil can convince you something in your mind, it's very difficult to get rid of. You know, I've worked with people. And uh, in working with people, I've, I've sometimes got shocked. You know, there was a gentleman. Most of you probably know, he used to come to church. But he's no longer in town. I don't know where he is now. But this brother, man, when he came to church... This brother had, he had long dreadlocks, rastas. He, I remember the first time he came to church. You know, he, he, was, he was not wearing properly, amen. He, he had just old things. The things are like wrinkled, amen. Uh, he, he, his trousers is, that he was wearing was big. Okay, the trousers was too big. You couldn't fit in it. But on top of that, he didn't have a belt. So he was holding the trousers like this, right? And I remember Brother Jonah said, you know what, let's go and give him my belt. So he went and he got Brother Jonah's belt. He put on a belt. He came to church. He was excited. He got born again. This brother, if you look at him, amen, um, he was so frail. He, he, he didn't have any weight. No meat on his bones. But as time goes, how many know God is good? This brother started to change. He cut off his rasters. He, amen, started to wear properly. He started putting on a tie. He got a job. And people who knew him were saying, man, there's a change in this man. There was a change. God was changing this brother. But somehow, there was a mental chain on his mind. He started going back to his old ways. See, this is what the Bible speaks about. That amen, um, sometimes, you know what, he says, um, it's like a pig. How I many you know pigs? You can wash a pig all you want. But pigs um, love to be in the mud. It will go back there. Or it's like a dog, amen. Um, a dog um, is a very weird animal because a dog can vomit now and then can go around a play player. When it's hungry, it will smell things and when it sees his vomit it will eat its vomit and um, it's a mental problem and many people amen uh, uh, the way they think will shock you you say man how do you think like that you know for example amen here where we live in Korea, you know, you'll be shocked people just want to resign they resign, get their pension, wait for a year, go back to the same job, and start working again. Or some people who don't just keep jobs. Amen. The list goes on and on, but it is a mental chain. Or people who just think themselves down. What do you want to be in life? Me. I just want to be a security guard. Okay, no problem with that, right? But hey, how can that be your biggest dream? That's, that's, maybe you can start there. No problem. But that can be the end of your life. I just want to be there. I just want to be a cleaner. 
You know, that should be a starting point, but that should not be the end of your life. Your dreams, amen, should be bigger. But guess what? Satan um, wants to lie to you um, that you never become better, that you never become this or that. Uh, you must just dream small. Amen. I, I don't want to be on fire for God. I just want to be just a little bit. I don't want to be too deep like other people. If I'm just here, it's fine, Pastor. I'll just be there in, in between. And this is a lie from hell. I will never become this. I will never become that. It's a lie. Amen. But that is exactly what Satan wants. There are emotional chains on people. But you see, the, the devil likes to mess up people's emotions. And we live in a society where people are very much emotional. Wherever you go, amen, you find emotional people. And uh, through that, the devil uses or, you know, he, the, he makes you uh, uh, just a very emotional person. You know, people, some people can be very emotional over small things. Emotions is a lot of things. Anger is an emotion. Amen. See, many people get quickly angry. But... They think it's a good thing, but let me tell you, anger is, an, is a chain from Satan that will place upon you. Yeah. When you get angry, you just want to fight. <laughs> me, I just see black when I'm angry. Well, <laughs> it's not a good thing. <laughs> or, you know, some people will show up. Ha, me, I'm, I'm short-tempered. <laughs> As if it's a good thing. And uh, when you watch some people, when they get angry, you will be shocked who it is. They are all of a sudden a different person. Um, they break things. Um, they mess things up in the house. Um, they want to punch everybody at home. Uh, and that is an emotional person. Some of them, it's because of the past. Amen. Um, or some people, you know, when their heart is broken, um, they don't want to do nothing. All they want to do is be in bed, roll around, crying the whole night. It's emotions. <laughs> Just crying, crying. You know, and it's emotions. You're just showing off your emotions all the time. But that's what, the, what Satan wants. He wants people to be like that. Or people who always feel pity for themselves. None of you like to feel pity for yourself. Don't raise your hand. <laughs> oh, poor me. You must feel sorry for me. I'm hungry. I don't have food. Leave me alone, everybody. I want to be in peace. <laughs> and this basically is self-pity. Emotional. I'm going to commit suicide. Nobody loves me in this world. Nobody cares about me. Well, you want people to hug you? For you to know you are loved? You know, like some people thought, you know, used to complain in church. Sisters, amen. There is no love in this church. <laughs> What more love do you want? <laughs> you want us to SMS you, we love you, or what? There is no love. There must be love. <laughs> what love do you want? Do you want a hug or what? Or a kiss? <laughs> we need to love one another. There can be family chains. Or generational chains. You see, sometimes the devil uses a strategy that you can see, amen, the same things happening in one family over and over again. This can be sicknesses, cancer. The grandmother had breast cancer. The mother has breast cancer. And now the daughter also starts to develop breast cancer. The chain that the enemy uses. Hypertension, diabetes, um, 
Amen. High blood pressure, or low blood, whatever it is, it continues. It's in the family. That's why, amen, if you go to the doctors when you, uh, the, or if you go for a surgery, they'll ask you, is there a history in your family of people who have high blood pressure or diabetes? Because they know these sicknesses happen in the same bloodline. It's a chain, amen, that the devil uses. And sicknesses, amen, can start to, to work as a chain, amen, um, from family, amen, to, to, to family, to family. And all you see is um, this whole family has been chained in one sickness. You know, very funny how some people like to even show off with, with sicknesses. Yeah, all of us are quite having high blood pressure. <laughs> as if it's a nice thing. We are all having asthma. Man, it's a sickness. It's not a good thing. Amen. But the problem with chains over time is, most of the time, what chains do is, you start to get used to having a chain on. There's a story, amen, I believe, about an elephant. Or an animal. I'm not sure what animal. That was chained to a tree for a long time. This, this elephant, this animal was chained, amen, and it tried to go, it was just coming back. It tried to go, it was just coming back. It was chained for a long time. Later on, it gave up trying. And guess what they did? They came and they cut off the chain. But that animal never went from there because it was used to the chain. It seems that's where I belong. Now, I tell you, amen, um, that's with many people. And the problem with chains is, chains have a voice. And they'll come calling you. Just like I'm saying, amen, um, this might have been a problem with your parents, but this change will come to you at a certain time. Last time to look at, amen, ways that you and I can be free from our chains. Just like I said, amen, about this animal who was chained, there's a high possibility children of God, born again, set free, amen, washed in the blood, can sometimes still suffer from chains. Whether they be mental, whether they be emotional, whether they be generational. You can be a child of God this morning and still be bound in chains. Because you have been listening to what Satan has been telling you. Amen. Now you and I, number one, if we need our chains to be broken, it has to be by prayer. Amen. The Bible says Paul is chained the other side. But on the other side, there are people who are praying. And I'm sure he meant even Paul himself was praying. And that can only be done at the name of Jesus. That you know what? When you call upon the name of Jesus Christ, um, the chains can be broken. The Bible tells us about the demoniac. Um, this man who has been uh, bound, amen, um, with demons. This man um, who was running around naked in the tombs. Um, but the Bible says the moment he falls on the feet of Jesus, um, his chains were broken. Um, he was delivered and in his right mind. Amen. That Jesus Christ has the ability to break the chains in your life. Um, the chains of addiction. Um, the chains um, amen, um, of any type of habit that you have grown to like um, that is wrong. Um, Jesus Christ can break them. Amen. The chains that have been taking you backwards. The chains that have been stagnating you. All the mental chains in your mind um, that some of you have limited yourself. Jesus Christ is ready to break them. Amen. Some of you think, amen, oh, because I don't have great 12, I will not become anything in life. That's a chain from hell, amen. amen. The devil will tell you every morning, you will become nothing. You will become nothing. 
Don't even try. Don't even dream. And before you know it, the mental change of Satan are becoming real in your life. In the book of um, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 6, uh, from verse 4, listen to what the Bible says. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought um, to the obedience of God. See, you and I need to be able to cast down all imaginations and everything that tries to exalt itself above the knowledge of God. But all these can only be done at the name of Jesus or in the name of Jesus. Amen. Jesus said, Amen, in my name. Will you be able to cast out demons? These demons that have chained people for years. And he says, Amen, you lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Don't allow Satan to lie to you. You know what? From this sickness, you cannot get healed because the doctor said so. Well, the doctors say so, but what does Jesus say? I'm interested um, in the report of Jesus Christ. Um, I'm not interested in what the world will say about me. Um, the world might say, you know what, you are a failure. The world might say, um, you will never become anything. Uh, but who does God say I am? Um, God says, um, I have a plan for you. Um, God says, amen, um, that I have um, a future um, and plans um, that will not hurt you or harm you. God says you are more than a conqueror through Christ. Amen. So who do you listen to? Are you going to listen to what the world says? Or are you going to listen to what Jesus says? The Bible says, amen, there is power in the blood of Jesus Christ. That once the blood of Jesus Christ touches you, all the chains will be broken off. The chains that have been on you for years, um, the chains, amen, um, that some of you have gotten to like, Jesus Christ can break them. The Bible talks to us about, tells us about the man named Hezekiah. Yes, Hezekiah, amen, uh, he's a king. And while he's living a wonderful life, uh, the prophet Isaiah comes in uh, and tells him, Hezekiah, you are going to die in 15 days. It's a bad news, right? 15 days, um, put your house in order because in 15 days, you are going to die. And the Bible says, um, Hezekiah turns his face to the wall and he starts to pray. It's the power of prayer, amen. He starts to pray um, and he starts to communicate with God. And the Bible says, um, after he was done praying, uh, God speaks to the prophet Isaiah again. And Isaiah comes and says, you know what? You only had 15 years, but God says now he's going to add, I mean 15 days, but God is saying I'm going to add now 15 more years to your life. Amen. See, prayer changes things. Amen. And our weapon, amen, against the chains of Satan is prayer. The people were praying in the room. But not only prayer, amen, uh, praise also is powerful. Again, uh, Peter, I believe this time he was, uh, the, the other time he was with, uh, uh, with Silas, if I'm not mistaken. And again, they are locked in the prison. And the Bible says, as they are together in the prison, amen, they begin to start praising God. And as they are praising and praising and praising, the, 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 the chains or the stomps that they were on, they got broken and they were able to go out of the prison. Because praise is powerful. 
That's why men, children of God, need to learn how to praise. Praise is not about how good you can sing. Some of you don't want to sing because, oh, I don't have a good voice. Uh, no, no, no. Praise is about um, telling God um, how good he is. You can praise a worship song um, or sometimes, amen, um, you can just speak the words to God. Um, how good he is. You see, my God is a good God. I serve a living God. There is no God like him. Do you know how to praise God? All you know is just, uh, you know, the same things. But can you be able to praise God? Remember, amen, that the children of Israel, they went to the city of Jericho. Now, the city of Jericho had walls. And uh, the power of the city of those days was determined by the strength of their walls. Like, amen, every city used to have walls. Maybe these Korihas. So what they would do is at Korihas, they would build walls all around Korihas. So maybe someone from Ocho can only enter through one gate. You can't enter from the other side into Korihas. You can only enter through one gate. So that's how it was. Now they came to this great city of Jericho. They want to enter in, but they can't because of these walls. And the Bible says, amen, God gives them a command. I want you every morning to wake up and walk around the walls of Jericho. But nobody must say a word. Just walk around the walls. All of you. Imagine the whole city, you're walking. Not saying a word. Every day. But then he says, amen, at the seventh day, I want you to walk around the walls, um, but this time um, I want you to walk around the walls praising God and singing songs. Amen. And the Bible says, um, as the children of Israel are walking on the seventh day, they are praising God, they are dancing, um, they are singing songs. Um, and as they are doing that, the walls um, are starting to crumble down. The walls are breaking of Jericho. Amen. Um, they are breaking down, breaking down. Um, and that's what happens um, when we start to praise God. Um, there are chains um, that are getting loosed. Amen. Um, chains from your past. Um, mental chains. Um, chains that control you. Amen. Chains in your family line. They start to break down the same way the walls of Jericho started to break down. Amen. So there's power in praise. I remember, amen, uh, many years ago, we were at Harvester's homecoming. And here we are, amen. Uh, there was a sister, she forgot her asthma pipe amen. in Swakot Wound. And this lady went for the uh, Harvester's homecoming. And now she's in, at the Harvester's in Vinduk. But she forgot her pipe. So we are all hoping that she, she should not have an asthmatic attack. And while we are hoping that the opposite happened, amen. this girl could not breathe. She is the amen. She, she's struggling. She's struggling. And uh, uh, the brothers from Wildfish Bay uh, say, you know what, let's go and pray for this sister. And all of us uh, were at the youth center, amen. Uh, we all went there, amen. We started to pray for this sister. We are praying and praying and praying and praying. Um, the sister is becoming unconscious. Uh, she can't breathe, amen. And finally, one of the brothers said, you know what, guys, um, let's just praise God. Uh, let's just thank God, amen, for the healing, amen. And we started to praise God. We are singing from this song to the next. We are praising God, praising God. We are calling the pastor to come. The pastor is rushing. He picks her up, takes her to the hospital. They start to run some tests on her. Amen. The doctor comes and asks the pastor, what sickness did you say this lady's having? Come on. He says, no, the girl is having asthma and she forgot her pipe. The doctor says, but we can't even see any sign of asthma. Amen. She's fine. She's healed. Amen. And the late girl comes back. She's excited. She's healed from asthma. That's what God does 
when we engage in the, in the arena of prayer. And you and I, amen, when things go wrong, you need to learn to praise God. Amen. When there are change in your life, you're not moving forward or you're just moving in front and backwards. Front, backwards. You are stagnant. You've got to praise God. You have to thank God, thank God that you have broken the chains of my life. See, we can't remain with the same chains all the time. Say, God, break this chain of my life. I can't live with this chain. And you know what? As I'm preaching this message, some of you are starting to recognize chains in your life. Amen. See, before this message, you, you probably didn't even know. Just like this animal, you are tied to a chain. You didn't even know there's a chain in my life. But as the word of God is preached... You start to realize, man, but there's a chain in my life. Oh, there's a chain in my family. And that chain has to get broken by who? The chain breaker. It's about as I close, amen.